Joining us now, David George Baird, senior bank analyst. David, great to have you with us. Uh, what's the takeaway so far uh, out of J.P. Morgan and Wells? Yeah, so far, uh, Mel. Good morning. Thanks for having me. The the numbers have been uh, have been pretty good for all of the gnashing of teeth and negativity around financials. We we were off to a pretty good start from an earnings perspective. Both Wells Fargo uh, and J.P. Morgan raised uh, net interest income guidance for the full year, and posted what we think were were uh, pretty good results in a, a very difficult environment. Yeah. Um, what are you going to be listening for in particular? on the conference call for J.P. Morgan. It's, it's really interesting. They posted a big gain on the back of the First Republic transactions, their first quarter reporting as a combined company at this point. Yeah. Um, Jamie Dimon's usually very vocal um, and descriptive when it comes to what he's seeing in the economy as well. Well, I think the main focus is going to be on credit quality as well as kind of forward-looking commentary as it relates to the capital markets business. As you know, market activity has slowed a bit from an M&A and a capital raising perspective. So it'll be interesting to see what they have to say on the market side. But I think it's really all a function of credit at this point. And then any further commentary as it relates to regulatory changes that we may see in light of some of the challenges emanating from the Silicon Valley fallout uh, earlier this year. But I really think from a regulatory perspective and credit are going to be the two areas of focus for the bank group as we go through earnings season here. What's your feeling on, on credit uh, and where it's headed? We're, we're getting mixed signals when it comes, I mean, you know, soft landing seems to be more and more the prevailing thinking on the street when it comes to the economy. But, you know, in, in terms of, of that, it, you know, does the stock support that scenario? And if that scenario is worse, then what? Well, I think it's important to expect that credit is going to deteriorate, and that is banks are in the business of taking risks, and that is how the, how the business works. We are coming off several years, Mel, of well below normalized credit costs, so it is very reasonable uh, to expect that credit is going to deteriorate as we go through the balance of 2023 and into 2024, in particular the office sector in CRE. And then consumer losses should should normalize as claims start to go up and unemployment starts to normalize as well. But that in and of itself does not mean uh, that, that it is particularly negative for the stocks. We're of the view that expectations, particularly for the regional banks, are very low uh, and estimates already incorporate fairly notable uh, normalization and credit quality. So we're, we're of the view that, that, that the group can handle uh, higher credit costs and that the stocks are already baking in a, a more draconian credit scenario over the next year or two. So, so baking in that, and, and then, of course, there's the upcoming regulatory changes, which could you know, increase the amount of capital banks have to hold. What bank in, in your universe do you think is the best value at this point? From our perspective, Mel, the, the most value is in the uh, is in the regional group, either the super regionals or the, the smaller regionals. So a couple of our favorites are U.S. Bancorp, USB, Truist, TFC, uh, Comerica, CMA, as well as CFG, Fifth Third, and Zions. Many of these regionals are trading at five, six, seven times earnings, whereas JPM is trading close to 10, 11 times. So we think from a risk reward trade-off perspective, there's more value, uh, Mel, in that uh, smaller regional group. 